Sneakily over to the mid. Sneakily snuck. Sneakily stuck. With sneaky in the bottom. Sneaky is on the other team this I time, know. though, so that'll be tough. Had to alliterate <laughs> into it. So we're going to see what happens. Coming into this matchup, Velocity playing quite strong within their past few games, but Vulcan, when they got this win, was able to do it in the early game pressure. If you remember, yeah. I believe it was the Vulcan uh, Kogma and Ezreal coming for Sneaky into the tri-bush. Sneaky walked right into that tri-bush and met a face full of hurt and was forced to flash right away. They didn't let them out of that chokehold the rest of the game. Yeah, Vulcan didn't get a kill off of that. Right. But they, they got pressured. such a huge so experience advantage very early, and they didn't let uh, Cloud9 get back in the game, which is very... Uh, well, they came back a little bit later, right. but it was something that we have not seen in a very long time. A team just completely bully Cloud9 for the first 20 minutes. Yeah, it was it was pretty crazy, but it also gets me thinking, right? Cloud9 has the game when it's always in their favor, and we see teams that can... Vulcan, actually, is the team that grabs a 2K gold lead and holds that lead forever, but that 2K gold allows them to catapult into the win of the game. Yeah, they definitely love whenever the game goes a distance, and so. they can get into that late game yep. where Zuna can shine on his Kogma or his Tristana Absolutely. or more lately even the, the Caitlyn. So it'll be interesting to see my point I was saying there as I went off on a tangent about Vulcan that Cloud9 can handle the early game pressure. They're usually the ones <laughs> dishing it out, but can the medicine be taken back in the same way? Rumble being out here, so Balls will not be playing that in the top lane, but the Ken and Elise as well for Psycho Sid, Smithy. These guys are all getting the picks that they want banned out right now. Yeah, bands are so interesting that they've actually let both Nunu and Zach through. And there is Nunu getting picked in. You can see the man on your screen locking it in for his team. A sigh of relief that they picked that up. But I think uh, Medio is going to be running around this one. We'll see what kind of pressure he can create. He is one to get his buffs stolen, but now he'll be doing the stealing. Yeah, when he's on that Nasus, he usually <laughs> has had to deal with so much counter jungling. Uh, you know, and we've gave him so much praise for dealing, yeah. for being counter jungled. If you are on Nunu, though, it's on you to keep up the pressure because if you don't make use of Nunu's kit go, go, and you go. don't steal away uh, high priority targets in the jungle, then you will fall off late game. What you want to do with Nunu is bully in that early game, make use of his ridiculous health. Mm -hmm. At this 3.8 patch, he does have the highest uh, scaling health plus the 10% buff yeah. from consuming a go uh, golem minion there. Uh, so it's definitely on that Nunu to make the early plays in the jungle. Mancloud coming in with that twisted fate should be his, but Mancloud on a playmaker. This already gets quite scary because Vulcan, whether they had the aggression or not, level six is going to be a big thing for them. I usually say that when you're watching Vulcan, your eyes are usually on Mentor Cloud to see what type of champion he brings to mid because he is... He does have a lot of options, but they usually tailor the team strategy for that game mm. around, you know, whatever he gets to the middle, whether it be a long range AD, AP poke or an AD assassin or someone with a half global like TF. You know, uh, Man Cloud reminds me of what we used to say about, or used to, still could say about Wicked in the top lane is that if he's ever behind, he always bounces back. Man Cloud has had games where he's 0 and 4 in the bottom lane at level 3 to 1, and he's still getting pushed, comes back to win that game in the spring split. So. Not somebody to toy with, but also that means it's hard to cut, focus that guy out. We see the next bands coming in. High grabs up his Zed, hasn't played that in a few games recently. And we see the Shen and Tristana coming in for Zuna. He hasn't gotten that in quite a while. So the Zed looking to assassinate middle uh, and just 100% to zero that TF before he gets yep. his Zanyas. Plus, he's looking to be that very dangerous duelist split pusher. TF, though, he has actually a very good uh, counter to, to Zed in that Zanya, so he can actually negate basically mm -hmm. half of the damage. Um, you just have to wait till you get that item threshold. <laughs> and the other thing that we have to point out is the Shen. On top of Mantoid Clouds, it's very easy to see where Vulcan are going with this one. Two Globals and the Tristana for the late game. They are definitely looking to extend this one. We saw this playing played against Dignitas. Their answer was to kind of grab up Nocturne and have something quasi-global to go against it. Uh -huh. We'll have to see what the Cloud9 can pull out here. They do still like the Ezreal on Sneaky. That gives them a global alt, so they can be in the global boat. Technically, you're Technically, right. Technically, it is a global. Technically. Yeah. Him or Draven. Oh, they get Draven the, all the Ash global. Though. Bam. <laughs> We're missing things, and they, we call ourselves casters. It's, oh. a, it's actually a really good <laughs> answer, too, though, with the, the Rise, because Rise is a very strong late game uh, oh. mage carry where where he can add ridiculous amount of continued damage, a sustained damage. So it's not all about the burst um, like Zed, but they will have multiple answers here and they will have the engage that they've been favoring with that Ash on Sneaky. It's been such a 
forgotten thing, Ash, the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, remembering that the AD carry can also bring an initiation to the game, but we've seen it already pick up a win today. We'll see if Sneaky can do it on Ash this time with a Zyra support coming in. His Bloodwater now left. He has Thresh on the board. We're looking for a top. So Sona's been or banned. Jungler. Probably the jungler. Uh, and Thresh has been picked. So I'm pretty sure Bloodwater's taken care of. <laughs> and he's going to grab up uh, Jungler, which could either be the Zac, uh, you know, Ooh. or I'll, I'll make my guess right here. It could be that Evelyn rib. It could be. <laughs> Did you steal Jat's crystal ball? Oh, my God. Oh, got it. <laughs> Lock it in. So he's going to be looking to, uh, it's it's an interesting how they compare most of the team looking for late game, but then they have this early pressure of an invisible Evelyn and TF once he hits level six. So there's some very strong ganking potential coming out here from this, this Vulcan team that could have an invisible Evelyn coming in to deliver a ninja on her back with Shen Stan United and then TF uh, porting in as well. It, it puts actually a lot more fear into the Cloud9 team for this early game. So I feel like a lot of this for Cloud9 is resting on Meteo's shoulders. Absolutely. You mentioned last game when it was banned away from NK Inc. that you kind of take away that Le Evelyn tax of the pink wards you have to buy instead of that. That's now put onto Cloud9. And buying pink wards over regular little site wards doesn't allow you to build items that make you fight, fight, fight. And that's Cloud9's motto is if we're not aggressing, we're not doing it right. Yeah, and I think the main person on Cloud9 that's going to feel this Evelyn burn is balls on that rise because a, a solo level a solo lane rise usually starts out with that mana crystal and just two health potions no words at all evelyn can just walk right over there with no fear of being seen out even by early invade wards because it's just going to be the pink ones that are effective against her so going after rise early and often to keep him behind could be a very viable strategy for Vulcan to get to the late game. Be just interesting to see which way they place the lanes. You see the teams poised behind us as I am completely ready for this. Ribbing to the third and Kobe to bring you the last match here in week five. Cloud nine, number one in the NALCS versus number two, Team Vulcan. We're getting onto the rift and underway as both teams head towards mid. And we do have Rise starting out with that Sapphire Crystal just for the extra mana and bullying and two pink wards picked up here on uh, Lemon Nation. So we'll have to see where he ends up placing those pink wards because those are going to be very important and a limited resource for this Cloud9 team. Man Cloud expecting to get crushed at level two by himself, his own Red Elixir. Yeah, Zeds are known for their all-ins <laughs> very early, burning ignites at even level one or level two wow. with those Red Elixirs. But Mantor Cloud on TF, has bought a red elixir of his own, which is quite rare, but it actually has been done even in the LCS. Mm -hmm. Reginald on TF has been known to buy red elixirs too. So even the AP champions um, will very rarely go for those red elixirs because uh, of the threat of being uh, killed so early in the game, even with flash up. No real offensive words here. Completely defensive for this game in our last match of the day. So these both of these teams have, yes, played, and they've been watching all of the games happen. So different things going through their mind, different intros and starting procedures have happened. It looks like both teams play it safe with the hard hat on here for the beginning of game six. And both supports being fairly stingy with their wards, you have to be very selective where you're laying those, especially if you're Cloud9. One pink already down in the mid lane here, and that's where they're gonna stick this rise. So Cloud9 know that balls would definitely be the easy target for Smithy, and they've made a nice adaptation here. Ooh. I love this. Uh, Maiden Champion Select, basically, they've decided to switch <laughs> Balls over to the mid lane here and give him both pink wards at the middle. Both of them on either side of that mid lane in the river. Really a great choice here. And we actually see Zuna going quite hard here with Bloodwater. Smithy going and grabbing his red. He may come to offer a little support or soak up the top lane experience. And then they're going to meet for a 3v1 possibly. So Smithy actually is not even going to go up to that top lane for to soak up this free experience? Okay, there we go. He changes, it, turns it back around. <laughs> he says, Zuna and Bloodwater, you've got that blue buff. There's free experience up here. So I want to nap yet. this. He gets all the way into the bush. And so whoever's in the top lane here, which is now high, Whoa. instead of that rise, is really oh, under trouble. One. This is 
is not going to be good. He flashes. They get the red buff on after the flash. Oh. They got the hook. First blood's going to be coming in here. He is going down, and it goes over to Smithy. That is the second time today that we've seen in the top lane a gank, the solo laner dodging back when there's a thresh hook, but the thresh hook's still landing because the particle is so big, and they throw it a little bit behind your solo laner, and they expect the dodge. A forced Great movement. Great job there by Bloodwater, landing that death sentence. And you have to give props, too, to Smithy sneaking into that bush. He got the sl the red buff slow onto high, which made it even easier for Bloodwater to land that death sentence. Great job here by Vulcan again in the early game, making Cloud9 pay. And the bottom lane aggression coming in here. 3v1. No, no, Psycho Sin. Lemonation takes another shot. He's going to be all right. Sneaky gets the kill. It goes out to Meteos. Great turret tanking coming in. They're still pressuring high. Level one under his turret to the actual level six coming in. Three level twos. And it looks like we might even have another dive now. He's at half life. Oh. They're going down. He has the shadow. There's the dodge. He gets back. The rocket jump. It goes to Zuna. The blue buff transfer not going anywhere. Oh, goes to Zuna. He's still alive with the shield. A great tower. What? Afro minutes him in here. And the bottom. Bottom turret does go down first for Cloud9, but there's no one else to answer up in this top side, so they're gonna get that too. Meanwhile, the dragon control, which we usually don't see this early in the game, is made available by this new new pick who has a level two uh, consume. He's got plenty of true damage to take this one out early. They rock the dragon down, but Vulcan delivering the absolute perfect amount of medicine back at Cloud9 in the form of aggression. Cloud9 says we have to react, we have to adapt. They bring it, and it's still 300 gold in favor of Cloud9 after all of that because of their dragon move. Yes. Uh, if you're checking at home, these are the top two teams in the league right now, and you can see why. Both teams executing game plans very, very well. The Evelyn playing to her strengths, going in invisible to come out with the first blood gank top. Meanwhile, Nunu with his dragon control, ganking bottom and immediately taking that objective. Great job by both teams here. Action pack game only four and a half minutes in. <laughs> One turret on each side evens out what map pressure has been lost and gained on both sides here. Two to one, Xsmithy showing himself mid. There's privy information for Cloud9 to be aggressive. Yeah, and the information is definitely a high priority in this game. You can see that by Vulcan's inventory wow. right now. Four members with wards. And here comes the flash. Oh, the Lemonation getting caught out. Xsmithy was there, but he never showed himself the second time he comes in stealth style. That is them keeping track of cooldowns in all lanes. Great job by Vulcan here. No. You can tell they timed that flash from the bottom lane and knew that it was a free kill, so Mantor Cloud was not wasting his flash to go for that one. Great job and answer and bring back the gold lead. And they're able to now leave Zuna to free farm in the top lane. 80 carry free farming at five and a half minutes in. That plus Shen freezing down bottom over here. They've They've left Psycho Sid. He's not pushing this wave at all. So they're going with the patented freeze your lane and force Cloud9 to make a move. This early in the game, it's fairly hard for them to grab something. Now that Dragon's already down, Vulcan don't have more to lose by freezing this lane. So let's go ahead and do it. A quick kill makes Sneaky grab up another Doran's Blade. Trying to get fast damage out of that volley. Looks like Bloodwater pressuring balls here in the middle lane. These guys are just zoning each lane that they can mm -hmm. periodically, one after the other. Smithy leaves this one, probably will go up top, maybe try to zone out that one. They are keeping the CS off, or actually minion kills off of Cloud9. And it looks like Cloud9's answer to this freezing in the bottom lane here for Vulcan is to just send three more members there and continue the pressure deep onto this side. The reason this is made possible is because they've warded up the blue side jungle here. But it opens up again. High over here. He just uses Shadow. Tries to get on. It looks like he will be able to get out of this one. He still has 75% HP. It's ticking on him with that Grievous Wound. It looks like it's Smithy. <laughs> no red buff. But these guys are going to waltz it down. Long walks by the Baron Pit is something we love. Balls is going to join in here. A 2v2. Zuna has his jump, but he is just patiently walking alongside. Better trying to get in the range. In. High is on the side. Mandatory Cloud. He's got the right guard, it slows in, they put the ignite down, the jump comes in, there's the passive assist, will he rocket jump again? He does not decide to go in, but they still pick up the coast to coast two kills. Cl Mantor Cloud, oh. right guard, worth it, close enough, oh, there's, there's destiny. destiny comes in, man, Cloud is participating.
participating in everything right here. Putting his hand into what he, what he can and what he can. Oh, they want to keep going. Oh, Stay my United. gosh. Shen coming. Wow. Psycho Sid almost went down there. They have to be careful. Okay, now. that was a waste of Sand United. But <laughs> besides that, amazing play right here from Vulcan. You can see why I say keep your eyes on Mantor Cloud because he's the playmaker and Smithy is not done. There's another kill for Smithy rewarded, and he hits level six with the Agony's Embrace on Sneaky Sloan of oh. for another death sentence. Moving in, it's a double kill. Wow, really? These guys <laughs> are everywhere they need to be at the right time, and Smithy is making it happen. We can see why NK Inc. had an Evelyn banned out last game. Great job by Vulcan. It looks like their early game pressure back in Dallas was not, or back in Anaheim, was not a fluke. They came out ready to play again, and they are definitely pushing back on this Cloud9 team, even with the Meteos on Nunu. A lot of money for Sneaky here, trying to be put into quick damage. Goes for that pickaxe after the two Dorans. The Blade of the Rune King already coming out on Zuna, which is going to mean better objective control as well. And it's almost nine minutes for Trist. She should not be ramping up at this point. <laughs> yeah, he, you can tell he's got that gold lead because he keeps on getting the free farm top. This is part of Vulcan's secondary plan here. They've got so much pressure from the uh, Evelyn and Twist of Fate, like mm -hmm. we pointed out earlier in Champ Select, that it frees up that Tristana to be ignored in the top lane and accrue all of this free farm. And something we've also heard, you know, even Doublelift mentioned, Trist should leave that lane almost 30 CS behind, and that's all right. He's up ahead of the game right now, so he's going to be able to make moves. And we've seen Zuna rocket jumping into these fights. They're not afraid to continue the aggression if it looks like it may not be happening. They're going to keep going. And that's one of the reasons why Zuna almost always favors this build of the early Blade of the Rune King, because okay. getting Cutlass is another slow for him, and he likes to jump in on his targets <laughs> and use that aggressively for, for extra activation burst damage. So let's take a little bit of stock of who else has what items. We have the Doran Shield start we've been seeing more recently by these top laners or solo laners, if you will. Shen coming out 0, 1, and 2, the Giant's Belt to start the split push when he can get that Sunfire Cape. Like you said, that stack of balls has been in mid. It's still coming up. The tier going into, again, the Catalyst, but we saw this from Cassidy last time. That means the late game stack up. Exactly. He is going to be weak early because he's building just mana, isn't even getting boots right now, but he will be the uh, late game salvation here for Cloud9. If he does ramp up when he gets his Rod of Ages completed and his Seraph's Embrace, that's a ton of damage. Another thing that we will have to look for here is if he goes with the recent trend in Korea, where before he even uh, finishes his Seraph Embrace, he'll go with that Spirit Vicious, which okay. adds cooldown reduction, right. which is very important for Ryze. Going down towards the Dragon, the first one going over very quick, the Cloud9 that we saw. Looks like they will be getting just Vision here. We'll see what kind of pressure Xmithy can draw from this Prink Ward, and then they'll decide what to do. So it's actually Smithy chipping in here, mm -hmm. uh, doing his part to keep control of these global objectives. Ooh. And they're having a pink ward fight between the junglers. Oh, Smithy and Meteos going to have a Bloodwater says, I'm going to put my hand in this one too. Meteos very close to going down. Mandatory Cloud alts with his team. It completely turned Cloud9 around. They wanted no part, and he wasn't even close to engaging or start. A double kill for Zuna, and they may look for Lemon, but they turn back for the Dragon. Amazing job by Vulcan right here. They baited the fight with the pink ward combo there, and Meteos just getting a little too big right there. Wanted to fight it, and Vulcan don't hesitate to burn their globals, turn that one around, and get a free or an extra dragon on top of it. That's going to be their dragon now, the first oh. one. Now one to each team, Man Cloud, the death mark. Oh, a little bit more damage, but he won't be able to finish it. The ignite wears off. <laughs> Mandatory Cloud can do no wrong in this game. He is <laughs> just off to an amazing start right here. And Smithy is the one who's actually ended up getting most of the last hits in all these skirmishes. So you have that very early advantage for a jungle Evelyn, which just makes the rest of Cloud9 very scared to go even through their own jungle without a, a giant line of uh, pink wards. Vulcan has a lot of players, and this isn't to tack on them or say bad things, but they have games where they've come from behind quite a bit. They know how to play from being down, but Cloud9 isn't formulating anything from what we usually see them doing. They're making the calls. They're the ones dictating where the positioning is on the map. But now that Vulcan has control, it's almost like Cloud9 has gone quiet. I mean, you can tell 
how much of a problem Cloud9 have with Vulcan just in champion select. Yeah. They talked about it so many times right, right. in their interviews, and it's it's manifested itself here as they've given over two globals to Vulcan that they are able to use very early game to shore up the weaknesses of Tristana and basically make Tristana even an early game beast by giving mm -hmm. him all of that free farm in the solo lane. And not only the, the double globals, I have to add this on, yeah. of, of Shen and TF, but also having Evelyn as your jungler, is all, it just adds so much more global pressure because they never know where she is. Even though she doesn't have the, the technically global, uh, global teleport or anything, she does have that invisibility, which allows her to exert her pressure anywhere on the map. Now let's talk about how fast this could change, Kobe, because we talk about it sometimes, but there are bounties to be had here. You have a Smithy be taken down by a high priority target like High, and then a Dragon follows. These guys could be back in the game. Cloud9 are never out of the game. Yeah. We've seen before them come back from so many different things. I would have to say they always have a hope. And getting the bounty onto Evelyn would be a great first step because that's max bounty. That's 500 right mm -hmm. there. The thing is, uh, they've only got two other kills here on, on uh, Mandatory Cloud and Zuna, so they haven't stacked up anything big yet either. The target is definitely that Evelyn, but if she does land her oh, uh, multiple person agonies and bracelets, it's a bit hard. So there's a great pink ward. They ended up paying the tax, and High will not go down this time to the Ez Evelyn sneak attack. Stand United still waiting to come up here. It doesn't look like any aggression comes from the vision of knowing where Xmithy is right now. No aggression from Sneaky or Lemonation in middle. They're still playing it safe. Maybe they know if they can't follow up on it, they don't want to start it. Yeah, well, it is very dangerous for them still, and there's the Destiny. What? What? Right in the face, he takes the turn. I don't think he wanted that to happen. This may be a we need to turn around. It looks like they're still kind of going. Psycho Sid goes in, but look how tanky they are. They can afford to like mess up the engagement. So it was a little bit of miscommunication from Vulcan, but because of that flash taunt there by Psycho Sid, they were actually able to zone Cloud9 off of that turret, and they get the global objective anyway. Just no kills rewarded. He didn't even need a Zanyas. He just took an arrow to the face and said, I'll stand still like I have one. Yeah, he's got... That was he's, ridiculous. He's got Psycho Sid over there going to give him the giant shield <laughs> from San United. So he's okay with tanking that one up for a little while. Plus, he has built that arm guard, uh, which does give him a decent it's amount just... of armor, a lot more armor than you usually see from a TF. So it's okay for him to take a few tower hits. Uh, and that's just because he was itemizing for his lane against uh, the AD Assassin. And really, he's, he's taking the team's aggression with him. That's not a very scary TF. He has two rings in that Seekers. He's not going to blow you away when he hits you. But that port in says, holy crap, we need to get out of here. So even in this position, he knows what he can play with. Yeah, and Sneaky does have to be scared of that TF port. Even though TF doesn't have a lot of damage on him, Ash, early game, is very squishy and doesn't have an escape of her yeah. own. That's why you saw him not hesitate to use his crystal arrow there as soon as the port's coming point in. Blank. Fly, fire that one up right in his face because that's all the Ash really has to escape at this point in the game. A 6,000 gold lead we said before the game. Vulcan does well at holding a 2,000 gold lead. So not rather they got the bag of chips and everything else to go with it. The needlessly large rod picked up right now by Mancloud. So that will be a nice burst in damage for him. Sunfire Cape finished up on Psycho Sid so they can continue the split push that much more and it looks like cloud nine still trying to answer not a lot of wards on the map right now though yeah so the options are very or any e wards very easy for vulcan at this point all they have to do is uh put their wards now deep inside of cloud nine's jungle and continue to use either shen or tf as a split pusher meanwhile cloud nine have very limited auctions they have to use ash's crystal arrow to pick someone off because if they don't pick someone off, they won't win that team fight. There's so many globals on Vulcan that they have to back up their teammates that if Cloud9 pick off the wrong person, the fight will just completely turn tables. And we talked about a little bit last time, Lemonation on Zyra. Zyra, very hard champion to die. Vulcan has found their way around that with the shield Psycho Sid brings with not knowing where X Smithy is. These guys have kind of taken away the niche engagements or disengages that Cloud9 has. So. Instantly adapting to these fights is something they need to do. And even their duelist in high on that Zed just now finished his mm -hmm. Blade of the Rune King, whereas Tristana, the AD carry here for Vulcan, Zuna already had his. So he was actually, uh, has just, a, just as much dueling potential there yeah. as the, the AD carry here. He can split push. And since Tristana is so safe as an AD carry with a rocket jump and her buster shot, 
uh, he can split push on that AD carry safely and not have to worry about uh, Cloud9 collapsing on him. And this is Cloud9 really, really going for the late game here. That Rod of Ages isn't finished on balls yet, so that has still time to ramp up. Another Dragon, the second one, going towards Vulcan here at 17 and a half minutes in. The 6,000 gold lead stays true to them. Two to one in turrets as they look to drop another one. So Dragon into a turret unanswered. Yeah, you can by see C9. even high there, backing off from Zuna. Very, very wary of the rest of Vulcan that were just seen at Dragon. He doesn't want to overcommit to that one. He pulls all the way back to the secondary turret, but Smithy is even going to stiff him out back down here. We have the Oracles coming out on the side of Lemon Nation, so it looks like Cloud9 is waiting to get themselves and their jungle back as their own. Right now, it's to guard these turrets. So much pressure from Vulcan, and knowing they can't take Baron allows them to do things and like this in bottom. Oh, there it is on the Zuna, the initiation. Coming in, Zuna pushes them back. A great buster shot there. And it's not followed up with any damage after the death mark. And that's amazing restraint from Vulcan. They did not panic and burn the Stan United. They saved it there. So a good cooldown still up for Vulcan, and they continue their duo lane split pushing here. The reason they have Shen top is because Stan United can actually affect that bottom lane here. Smithy picking a fight Ooh. with Balls. Balls able to put out some damage. That Rod of Age is now charging up. His blue buff. Oh, and he flashes the arrow. Beautiful work there in the fast fingers. Great reactions there from Smithy. So that was one of the globals down here. The Destiny was actually popped for Mandatory Cloud. Which, by the way, that's the reason he was in the middle, is because the TF Destiny can only get about halfway, whereas Shen can come anywhere <laughs> on the map. He is going to find how to get there any way possible. Right now, given High good harassment in the top, you can just see High expending all of his energy in that battle to farm. And it's just going to be Vorpal Blades for Psycho Sid. So he's got any chance he needs to get down to help the team. Smithy there being pushed out by Meteos. Oh I thought he was going in, but here's a restraint on Balkan, knowing that they can just continue this poke. Zuna getting very, very confident right now. So we've <laughs> seen this actually be a problem for Vulcan. Sometimes Zuna gets a little too overconfident when they are winning right. this far, and he makes some positional mistakes, which are pretty easy to do when you are Tristana and you're ahead. You feel like you want to jump in and get all those kills. He Ooh. still should remain calm and just ride this lead out because Vulcan still can easily give this game right back to Cloud9. And Vulcan's communication is the same as Cloud9's right now, or Zuna would not have 3,000 gold in his pocket. Usually you go back when you have 1,500, so you can continue to scale with the game or near 2,000. To have that much gold means the communication is, hang on, let's slow things down. Exactly, and that's why he was so confident. They've been able to feed Zuna free lane farm <laughs> since about <laughs> All three, four minutes <laughs> into this game. Oh, so crazy. 194 to 145 in that realm of the AD carry CS. We see 146 to 138 in the top, and the mid lane is 163 to 159. So, as you pointed out, that free farm has contributed muchly, and now he's not even looking at any real armor yet on the side of Cloud9. So these fights can get real scary with that Infinity Edge being, being built. These fights are going to get real scary real quick here because the global pressure still up for Vulcan here. Yeah. The Stan United, they haven't pulled the trigger on that one, and it's allowed that Shen to become extremely tanky himself, too. So not only do they have a ridiculous backline threat in Zuna, they have a very, very strong frontline tank in Psycho Sid. Yeah, he's going beefcake, looking for that Randuin's next. Just Giant's Belt on Giant's Belt like it was a sale down at the store. 11 to 1 are the kills, if you haven't taken a look at that score script lately. Vulcan has not been able to find any more kills, but that's because Cloud9 is definitely playing it safe. They make it one here, though. Huge shots from Zuna. The box goes down, and they can't even get close to him. He is given that power to go. Oh, so aggressive. Jumps past the turret, so he doesn't grab aggro. The positioning, oh, so good coming in from Vulcan right now. Man, Cloud eats the arrow once again with good hands. Looks like they grab the turret, and once again, just out pressure these guys. Yeah, and there's again. Vulcan, they are basically a five-man team down in this bottom lane, even with Shen top and Twisted Fate middle, because both of those champions can instantly join the fight. And because they picked off balls so early, got him down to 50%, able to even dive turrets. This has to be the one time we've really not, we've really seen Cloud9 not bring that Zack initiation, that Jarman, that something that can jump into the fight for them. They are waiting for something to happen every time, and it's not their not their forte. I feel like it's Cloud9 who were baited. They bought into the hype of Nunu here. <laughs> and Cloud9 almost 
thought a little bit too much about it. Everyone in North America has been talking about Nunu being this guaranteed right. first pick. Yeah. But really, it's not a guaranteed strategy that you can easily pull off. Just having the Nunu is only half the battle, Riv. You gotta be actually be able to steal away the early buffs and keep up the vision inside your enemy's jungle, which oh, is why Vulcan did that start where they had the support and AD take away blue buff. But Kobe, how can you, when it's a 7-0 and 3, and Eve <laughs> that's in every lane when you wanna be counter jungling? It's so hard, and Smithy has done everything to the T to get things done for his team this game. Smithy definitely deserves a shout out. Exceptional play on that Evelyn using her kit for exactly what it was meant for. The invisibility that you get starting out the game allowed them to snowball that top lane. He's the whole reason why Zuna is this strong. Because of those two repeated ganks on high up top and allowing them to take that turret, he's the reason why they got that huge early advantage. We'll see what else Cloud9 can put in their hands here to stop that Smithy. Stop that Evelyn. They're still working with just the Sightstone. Stone. Buying up the Pink Wards has, like we said, cost a lot of money in that mini game of playing find the Evelyn, make sure she's not 7-0 and 3. And because uh, Cloud9 almost outthought themselves where they put both of their Pink Wards in the level 1 uh, around that Rise in the right, middle right. to protect Rise, that they actually lane. left uh, high up in the top lane blind. And that's exactly the weak point that Vulcan went after. Zuna and Vulcan controlling the objectives thoroughly right now with a near 10,000 gold lead as it ticks up slowly, still CSing in each lane. The top outer turret from Cloud9 here to be dropped. They're trying to fund themselves with a little bit of that global gold, get a little bit more vision on the map. Uh, it looks like McCann Cloud going in here, gets a few good attacks onto it, but like we said, he doesn't have that burst damage yet, so it's to create the utility of the fight. The box goes down. Again, Vulcan trying to micro that damage of the turret in and out. Zuna has not been focused, but he still has the turret on him. They continue to go onto the fight, and he finds himself another kill coming out, a triple overall for the top turret in favor of Cloud9. And that was because both solos of Cloud9 were oh, up dear. top trying to take out Psycho oh, Sid. Smithy now is going to get found out here. How'd he go seek your hit? <laughs> He didn't say Ali Ali Oxen free. He would have been perfectly fine. <laughs> okay. He would have been fine. Ah. Oh. Sometimes you forget when you grow that, old. You yeah, that's like you when you walk into the, the uh, kitchen and the little five-year-old is just hiding behind the refrigerator door there. <laughs> I see you, buddy. You're, you're The Blade, the Rune King, we saw finished on Zed earlier. He gets that last whisper on. Finally, he does have quite a bit of armor to deal with on the other side. Man Cloud, again, throwing himself into the fire to begin that fight and really waiting on that Zonia's, just baiting people out, saying, hit me, then finally hitting it. The Lich Bane is there, allowing them, we've seen it, increase that speed on objective taking and the turrets, which are in their favor, four to two. Yeah, he's got the items to back up his play now, and it was just such a fortuitous destiny that he pulled off in that last dive, because not only did it allow him to go in directly on Sneaky, but it revealed the solo laners of Cloud9, like I said, high end balls, were up all the way in that top lane, trying to pull off their gank on Psycho Sid. Very hard to pull off those uh, sneaky bush ganks when the other team has TF, which will reveal your entire team. So you got about 375 gold spent in wards. Just the pink ones coming out. Meteos placed his down. We can see that High still has one. Lemon Nation picking one up. Does he still have his Oracle? So these guys are, no, he does not. So that went down as well. They're trying to stay safe. And really, a seven, like we said, seven, one, and four, coming in super strong. He is initiating the fights. Vulcan is coming out big, but Cloud9 doing what they need to. They've stretched this one out, and they're starting to be able to fight back. So at this point, Vulcan really need to turn the screws and keep on uh, right. the pressure here with the objectives. They actually have a new option open to them at this stage in the game since they have accrued enough items to take down Baron very quickly. They can use Psycho Sid and Mantor Cloud to keep up pressure in the lanes and sneak Baron with their AD carry that has Last Whisper, Blade of the Ruin King, and Infinity Edge. That Zuna can easily burn down Baron if they decide to switch gears and, and go for that purple buff instead. It's something that Marn started doing when Tristana, you know, Heartbeat started bringing it back with Blade of the Rune King. Build it for objectives. Shred down Baron, shred down Dragon. So like you said, that option is super open. And Vulcan, we know the aggression of him. He has that red buff playing a little bit aggressive, dodging out the grasping root. Get himself some CS on the thorns. Looks like they will start to pressure this turret. They're just 
not even scared right now. They're taking turret shots in front of Cloud9. Well, you, you can see, this is one of the reasons why everyone talks about Tristana's late game hyper carry uh, potential is her ability to siege turrets. Her range at level 16 already up to 685 right now. And, and it will break 700 even by the time he gets to that level 18. So he can get those free shots off on the turret that we're seeing right now. Plus, with the dark, with the Lantern of Thresh, he even has extra escape. <laughs> Just find his way out. Psycho Sid being a bully in the bottom lane. Rocking out with his Sunfire Cape, trying to push that. The oh, there's the Crystal Arrow Initiate. He jumps it away. He gets a pretty good shield coming out. Deathmark going right down on him. High takes a few shots, and he gets almost obliterated on that. Going down, Zuna is godlike coming into this. Where are you going, man? Cloudy just puts it on for vision. He is a little too close and takes a turret shot to boot. They are still going to be right on the Strangle Thorn. It's going to be Psycho Sit up. He is the tankiest one, and he's not taking much damage from Rise. Actually, a good trade there. One for one is something Cloud9 will take every day, but the turret will not be long for this world. Taken down there by Zuno. You can see him a quick twist to the neck as he shakes that one off, prepares his team for the next fight. 16 to 4. 28 minutes into this matchup. The 10,000 gold lead you think would allow Zuna and team to kind of start the train up a little bit harder and run it right into the front door, but it's been Cloud9 able to find a way to stall that train out. So that was exactly uh, what Cloud9 would prefer to have start out the team fights is a crystal arrow onto Zuna, followed up by assassination attempts from high, but with the stand united there, Zuna was able to stay alive and they weren't able to finish off the rest of that team fight. Uh, so basically it was high diving into Vulcan and Smithy diving into Cloud9 to keep them back and both of those heroes losing their lives. And here, Kobe, as we reach 30 minutes, we take stock again of the items, the bulwark coming out instead of the fast Randuin. So they give the AOE magic resistance to the team and that spirit visage, yes, finished off onto Rise finally. Yeah, so we did have balls go for that uh, popular Korean build where um, they'll get that Spirit Visage before finishing the Seraphs because of the cooldown reduction uh, and also because mm -hmm. of the inc increased healing from when he pops his ultimate. 20% uh, is actually a huge amount because of the massive spell vamp that Rise does get when he pops his ulti. Fourth Dragon going over to Vulcan of the game and you can see it increasing in that gold lead at the top of the screen. Next to the kills, an arrow. Dodge out there, but he jumps into the rest of the team. They take out the assassination and the engagement that Vulcan's been bringing to the fight. That was because we had Stain Knight still uh -oh. down. So there was not an extra answer here from Vulcan. And Cloud9 doing exactly what they... Oh, here comes Ooh. Ramalzi. He's not Desperate done. power, he throws it on. It's going to be mandatory Cloud in the Zanyas. Oh, an absolute zero. They're forced to flash out of it. Stranglethorn popping up the entire team of Vulcan. The focus on Nizuna. Can he keep himself out? The damage is gone for the AD carry, and it's going to be sneaky coming from the back line. High to finish off the kill, and he picks it up with the blades. Zuna now in the front, a little too sure of himself. The shutdown bounty going to Meteos. And this is why you never count Cloud9 out, because they can turn team fights being more than 10k gold down. Great execution right there. Starting it off with the crystal arrow pick and then turning it into the Venn diagrams of the Nudo ult plus the Strangle Thorns from Zyra to turn that team fight. That was a full bounty shutdown going from Tristana. That's going to be very nice for them to bring in. Smithy looking to get back in here. You can see Hi just kind of <laughs> putting his arms back, <laughs> relaxing on that one. The team all smiles right now for Meteos to sneak on your screen. You can take a breather after yeah, that one, guys. Absolutely. Amazing execution to get right back in this game. Vulcan hesitate for a second to finish it off. And even though Smithy flashes the crystal arrow, he still was bursted down so quickly because of the long cooldown on the Stan United, which is the counterplay that's built into this Shen. Like, he's not just some amazing 100% win mm -hmm. champion, and that's why, because the cooldowns on these uh, global ultimates are much longer than those of the, the sort of normal ultimates, I guess. You uh, have to thumbs up Cloud9 completely buying wards the whole time. Everybody's chipping in and it finally paid off. They had to blow <laughs> yeah. a few flashes, but they took down a Smithy and it looked like a better fight for them overall as they just walked through that one. It wasn't Vulcan being able to have any peel or any answer back. So it's Vulcan to not make that mistake again. That's why everyone's always talking up wards as the strongest item in the game. Because even at points like this, when you're down over 10K gold, Cloud9 showing 
solo cures everywhere that you can still have hope <laughs> yeah. and you can come back from these what you need to look for are the pickoff opportunities Probably going to have a change in thought, a change in mindset, that is, for Xmithy. He may be more by the team a little bit more, only coming around the backside when he knows it's going to be safe. No more single roam for him. The wards are out for him. He has a pink ward, so it looks like he will still be trying to get himself into some tricky positions and get ready for these fights. Yeah, I mean, and that's exactly why we aren't seeing Cloud9 go aggressive after there. Yeah. Oh, you, we had a great <laughs> win on our team fight, and we got Baron. They're very much aware that they're still behind in this game. Yes. <laughs> Just because we are congratulating them on a very well executed uh, mini comeback there, they've got a lot bigger of a hill to climb to get uh, on top of this game. They're yep. definitely still on the back foot. And even with that Baron buff, uh, they're a little bit scared to engage on Vulcan. Well, they're definitely doing the right things, Kobe. That used to be an 11 to 1 score. Yeah, Vulcan picked up a few more. But picking up six more for themselves has been very good and definitely the gold they need coming into high, coming on to sneaky as well. Elimination, like we said, able to get that Ruby Sightstone out in this wards that they've needed so much for that power, so much for that vision. And the, all the wards, by the way, this ward battle that's going <laughs> on is all in Cloud9's jungle. Like, we don't even have Vulcan's jungle as an option here. Nobody's even thinking about placing stuff down on that side of the map because that is a long ways away for, e uh, for either of them right now. The ball, and the ball has been on this side. Exactly. Of the <laughs> and we can see Cloud9 immediately pulled back from that mid turret. Even that outer turret, they have no, they have no option to push that one down because of Shen's constant uh, split pushing bottom. And also to see what kind of strength the mid turret holds. It hasn't been much pressure from Cloud9, but there's been a lot of focus on Vulcan to keep that up. They know that spreads to the bus, right? Nobody's going to go outside to go all the way in. It's really helping them keep a defensive wall across the whole river. That is basically their base of operations where the, most of their <laughs> plays are coming from. Mid-turn. Exactly, because they want that Twisted Fate, that Mantoy Cloud in the middle so that he can have the option of either helping Shen top or joining the rest of the team bottom. And so that point of control of the map is just so crucial that they've put everything to keep that one turret standing. Also, that Double Global doesn't allow hardly any split push to come from Cloud9. Right now, Cloud9 making that forward part of, or rather Vulcan making that forward part of Cloud9 jungles, jungle theirs. Exactly, Cloud9 are not the ones to make the first move anymore. They have to wait for the opportunity to land another Crystal Arrow from Ash onto a high priority target that is either Smithy or Zuna, and burst that champion down before they can be the ones going on the offensive. Once it gets to this five, to these six items, it kind of erases what's happened in the game. Besides you have it in her it tur turrets and inhibitors down, these fights go to positioning, they go to mechanics, and really that final focus. The items are just the perk of the fight. <laughs> Exactly. The items are just the, the power in the punch that you are packing. It's yep. all about that positioning. And especially for Vulcan here, you have to keep uh, your eyes on Smithy because he's the one that's trying to be uh, coming in from the sides mm -hmm. here. Evelyn players are always trying to flank the enemy team to come in on the squishier targets from the back. Because if you land your Agnes on Brace, on more people, then you're rewarded with a bigger shield. So you want to try and get to the back line and hit uh, as many people from, from the side as you can, which makes you more tanky, which allows you to go in. So the timer now for Vulcan, as they get themselves back and tanked up just a little bit more, going to be 38-10 coming out on that Baron. They are going to get themselves back and set for that. Wouldn't be surprised if we see Psycho Sid go back towards that bottom lane for a global pressure stand united towards that Baron. The Baron coming up in 1 minute and 20 seconds will certainly be a highly contested <laughs> <laughs> objective of the game. As both teams uh, know it. They're getting wards out. Because Vulcan, while it's a, a bit safer to siege up, if they can draw Cloud9 out to the center of the map, and not even if they don't even get Baron, it doesn't matter. As long as they can draw Cloud9 out and land some kills, then they can take those death timers at this point in the game are long enough for Vulcan to easily break through an inhibitor turret. 
There's the destiny to figure out where everyone is. Bloodwater trying to zone out here. Good shots from Medios. The arrows used on the Bloodwater. That's a lot of focus onto the support. Stranglethorn does not stop Zuna. He is left on the outside to be open. They try to get the box in. A great flash in from Bloodwater. Really shuts down the team. Balls and team trying to get back in, but he falls down high to take down Nick Smithy. He gets himself a killing spree. The outside of this fight is chaotic. Everybody is trying to find the right positioning. And Cloud9 actually come out ahead on that one. They got two kills. It's going to be up to Medios oh. and Heidi Hill quickly, but the they grab answer. over the shoulder, and Zuna finishes off another kill. He is taking turret shots right now. He needs to get himself to safety. Zuna still firing away at the turret, but he stayed too long. Oh, the hits and the arrow followed him through the air. Hide to now have red buff. Bloodwater's going to get knocked up on this one, and he's going to get taken down. The double kill going to Sneaky. The 80 carries getting fed. So let's go all the way back to the beginning of that fight that was initiated there. Mantoy Cloud did actually a really nice job teleporting in and immediately zanya Zing so that three members of Cloud9 grouped up around his Zanya's position and allowed Smithy to land a three-member Agony's Embrace, but it wasn't enough. And because of the positioning there of Zuna, they were able to come out with a head and a second Baron going down to Cloud9. Absolutely ridiculous. Lemon Nation with an immaculate Stranglethorn there. He put it right in, knocked up two, and Zuna's like, I have to run in the opposite direction of this fight. Like you said, that positioning hurt them in the fight. Cloud9 finding ways back in. Exactly, even though the Crystal Arrow landed on Bloodwater, which is not ideal. Yeah, yeah. Zuna was zoned back by that to dodge it, which allowed the Stranglethorns to zone for another two seconds there. So a great combo of Lemonation and Sneaky. Actually, even though they didn't kill Zuna, they negated his damage for the first part of that fight, which allowed Cloud9 to take down those early targets. And just Cloud9 are making one of the best cases for a comeback that I have seen all summer. We said it just a few seconds ago, Kobe. It's going to be the positioning in the fight. That's still a six. Oh, that's still a 9,000 gold lead right now. If you can do math right, I had to, I had to add it up for a second. <laughs> But with a 9,000 gold lead, that's a few core items for multiple people. That means you are up in damage. In scaling, everybody's just about level 18 besides the supports and maybe the jungles. Smithy is 17. So Cloud9 is showing that they have the better fight prowess. Exactly. The longer we go, the less those level advantages matter that Vulcan have because everybody's capping out here. And one of the biggest items that was just now completed, completed for Cloud9 was the Void Staff on rise so he actually will get a huge amount of uh increase in his damage because of the percentage penetration that that offers and you can see where cloud nine puts themselves right now where they're thinking we have baron we're going to use this to completely defend they know they don't need to pressure themselves in anything silly yeah i said it last time which was the uh, you know 30 minute baron or so still <laughs> that they got they didn't use it to go offensively and still 10 the minutes later second baron <laughs> even that they've gotten they still do not want to overextend because Vulcan can do exactly what they did all early game, which was use the Stand United and Destiny to pick off the members of Cloud9 and make them pay for splitting and poor positioning. Zuna definitely showing that he has the items in his favor with the Phantom Dancer and the Quicksilver Sash already created with the Distortion Boots to keep that barrier and flash coming up quite quick. It looks like it will be a Quicksilver Sash for Sneaky, but he's a little ways off of that. See if it affects the fight greatly in this next engage if they go for it. So Baron is going to drop uh, in another uh, minute and a half here. Until that time, Cloud9 are pretty much safe to defend their inhibitor turrets. They don't have to worry about the siege here um, from Vulcan because of the regeneration and the extra stats that that buff offers. Whole lot of items coming out for both teams. Looking at each inventory right now, that Hex Drinker on top of Randuin's as well. High, starting to build a little selfish mitigation for the damage that he's finding as well. And that's what you're going to be able to do once you start hitting these six items. You see everybody start to build for themselves a bit. And the reason we've had this adaptation from High uh, has a lot to do with Zuna's defensive item that he's gone with, which is the Quicksilver Sash. So he can uh, Quicksilver Sash off that death mark. Yep which is basically half of the burst damage that High would be putting out. So High's opting a little bit more survivability there to stay in longer and be able to make use of his other damaging abilities and not just be a one-hit wonder relying all on the death mark. And we, 
you have to consider in the last three or four minutes, since this Baron's been taken, so it hasn't been that long because then that Baron would be wearing <laughs> off, that these guys haven't even really seen each other. There are a crap load of wards in the jungle right now. That There's probably like $1,000 <laughs> worth of wards by both teams in that jungle. Nothing on Vulcan's side. Like we've said, the game hasn't happened over there this time. But they are just waiting this out. Like I said, they haven't seen each other for the last five minutes. And they haven't seen Dragon either. Neither team <laughs> yeah. feels like that global gold over there is is even worth their time walking over to because even though Vulcan have complete control of the map they've had to keep pressure up on all three lanes to keep vision of cloud nine and they haven't had the opening to go for that dragon here it, very interesting turn of events with the Tristana shoving that top lane cloud nine know that most of the damage here for Vulcan's not available oh the flash on the man cloud they have a four, only five on one he gets out no way Vulcan gets the turn he gets the thresh express he bought his monthly card. Bloodwater's there for the save. They go turret for turret, and it's a teleport for a push in the bottom lane. Great job by Mandatory Cloud, baiting that one in, wasting their time, and allowing the opening for the inhibitor turret from Zuna. That was the ridiculous positioning by the Thresh Lantern. Considering the entire team of Cloud9 was hatching the Lantern, I don't know how Mandatory Cloud found it. It's pretty hard to click on one of those, and if you body block it very hard, Mantory Cloud still has his flash up because oh. of that dark passage. And with one inhibitor down, the hardest part of the game for Vulcan has now been passed. They actually have the opening into the base of Cloud9, finally. That gets scary. Psycho Oh, said, there's the barrel! Oh, they hit Zuna. There's the cleanse and the sash. When he gets hit up, that means the death mark is going to hit. He gets down. Balls hits him with one more Q. Balls goes down as well with a one-for-one retribution kill. The shutdown going over to Lemonation. This is going to be an obliteration fight for Cloud9. And Sneaky picks himself up another one. And you can see how Vulcan, the two members that could get away, did not hesitate to leave everyone behind. Because if that was an ace, Cloud9 could very well hide on. Oh, Smithy goes in. He goes to Death Mark, oh. not Death Mark, rather, but the E from High going off, saving him quite easily. Looks like they won't have minions for this turret, just a few, but they're going to try to tank this one out. Smithy just pulled so much pressure off of the base of Vulcan right now by stopping High's back. But he's actually going for the bottom turret, and they're looking to trade inhibitor turrets right now. That would actually benefit Cloud9. There is. Oh, High goes in. It's Smithy popping out the Zanyas. Does not. Hey, as he throws down the ultimate, won't have the damage, though. The ignite's going to be there. It won't allow him to get back in that sustain. Goes down. They will lose the inhibitor. Cloud9 trading very nicely. Ooh, so not only did Smithy not go back to base to defend their inhibitor turret, but High comes down to answer. Make him pay for trying to split push that. Very, very good answer here from Cloud9. Just clawing their way back into this game. And this is where Cloud9 wanted to be. They get their little extra pieces of candy. Everybody can buy an Oracle now. The no Eve surprises are gonna come out. We saw High put one under his belt there, as well as a Thorn Mail coming out. Like we said, once these six item builds start coming out, the previous part of the game pretty much gets erased and it's all about the now. Well, you talked about the positioning earlier in the game, about you know 20 or 30 minutes ago, we were talking <laughs> about positioning and I was talking about Zuna having a tendency to get a little overconfident and be on the front lines. And we saw them paper it right there too, where the arrows are landing on Zuna, forcing him to use his Quicksilver very fast. This Baron timer for Cloud9 gonna pay off once again, another Baron going down for them. Coming in on that one, Finally bringing the gold within 3,000, a reasonable amount, but they don't care. They've been fighting with 10,000 down, and it's been going well for them. With 3,000 down, this is starting to go sour for Vulcan, and they are they know they're starting to lose ground in these fights. They definitely were not ready for that Baron Snake, and they finally actually turned their attention over to the Dragon to try and answer. 6-1. Uh, but now the Destiny comes out, and they could actually go for a pick. Dragon, I thought that was a body, but it was just the lizard falling over, going down. Nobody gets hurt. Zuna makes it out. So they have uh, both red buffs there. Uh, Destiny for a red buff steal. At this point in the game, Vulcan are not looking to dive onto Cloud9, so the cooldown on that Destiny will be back up before they need to uh, exert that pressure again, and it's not a wasted ultimate. That was actually a pretty good steal to get another red buff. Thornmail's getting a lot of love in this game. We have three on the map now. Psycho Sid purchased one. There's also one on Medios, and we said High has one to himself, along with the highest CS in the game at 370. So, no, 409 coming in from Zuna. I guess it's been all that free farm. <laughs>
Yeah, Zuna's a fairly rich man. He's actually got that Mercurial Scimitar upgrade now. So the only thing that he could possibly continue to spend money on besides consumables uh, with those elixirs is changing over his Distortion Berserker Greaves to a Zephyr for the extra uh, CC reduction. To be an interesting trade-off since he is being hit with so many Crystal Arrows, he might actually consider it so that he could save his Quicksilver Sash or his Mercurial Scimitar activation for that death mark. I feel like Cloud9 is antsy on this one. They know what to do and they don't want to rush out of the base. They need to wait for that inhibitor, but I'm sure they don't want to use this consecutive Baron that they've been grabbing for defense again. They want to use one of these for offense. The lanes have been forced not in their favor. Cleaning that up right now, they may still get to use Baron for a fight, but Vulcan is trying to make that non-existent. Cloud9 are doing such a good job staying calm, and we keep seeing uh, the player cams over there showing them every after every Baron a sigh of relief <laughs> and a four more minutes of of, uh, of game time extended there for them. Every single one of those is one step in getting back in this game, though. They know that they cannot overextend after one of those, and that's why they haven't been pushing this. They're taking it one step at a yeah. time and making sure they don't drop this game. Kobe, that ward down by Wraiths, or Wolves, I should say, in the bottom yeah. half of the map, that's probably one of the first ones they've had to place there, thinking they're going to get aggressed on in the past 30 minutes. So you can see that Vulcan is considering Cloud9 very much has the way to get this back in their favor. They definitely are now thinking about the dangers yes. of the Cloud9 offensive movements, which have not been a problem for the first yeah, 40 minutes of this game. <laughs> Sometimes it takes that long. We've seen teams do it. Carnalogic Gaming loves this style, have adapted to different ones, but it can still be used. And Cloud9 is really doing it for the first time here towards the late game. I think it's actually the second time they put in the late game, but this time, the first, they've been stressed this hard. Yeah, and this late into the game, we're seeing some very interesting changes because of the team comps and the late game item builds. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have Guardian Angels starting to come into play, it makes it very, very dangerous for uh, Vulcan to have continued engages now. They would much rather have sporadic fights and be able to pull out after dropping someone because if that rise revives and gets back up, talking about that earlier Spirit Visage build, he'll be able to regain a whole bunch of life once he does get back up. Pop that ultimate and you get so much spell vamp that he can actually sustain for a very long time. So the scores will just go from what they were. It was 11 to 1. Then it was 16 to 7. Now it's 19 to 15. Within 4. Within that 3,000. Well, it's 4,000 is gold right now. And 7 to 5 in turrets as Cloud9 has also been closing that gap. Cloud9 are definitely going to look for an arrow very soon here because that Shen is split pushing bottom. There's the destiny from Twisted Fate. Shen's gonna be coming back in. They try to lock down this fight. Man Cloud in the backside. Psycho Shen goes with the top back to Sneaky. Sneaky is not doing damage to the full bore of the team, but the arrow comes in. Bloodwater on the backside. Zuna is still alive, wreaking havoc from the back line. Gets slowed by the Ice Blast. Guardian Angel number one is down. Number two was also popped on high. Both of the Guardian Angels are down, and Zuna can re-engage. Oh, Zuna started shooting a minion instead of Meteos. Oh my gosh, he's getting taken down now. Meteos back in the fight. One more Ice Blast. It's going to be Psycho Sid getting hit up. How unfortunate could that have been? Shen is still alive. Now you have to worry about the home guards coming out as Vulcan are trying to recall to get back into the fountain. Cloud9, after 40 minutes of being on their heels, going for the first Nexus turret. It's 40 seconds on Twisted Fate and Zuna. They're going to be going to the fight. Smithy has the power to push them back. Lemon Nation goes down, and the Nexus is safe for now. Those are the two home guards right there, Smithy and Psycho Sid. With those vibes just paying for them, they got two more kills, and now they have control of the map once again with an exposed inhibitor and 60-second death timers. We'll have to see if they actually want to make an offensive move here. They will have to do something. That bottom inhibitor can completely be pressured with a, with a rise and an ash up right now. Sneaky headed towards the bottom lane. They don't have ward coverage of where they're going, but they are hauling ass down mid. And we talked about cooldown management earlier in the game. Vulcan need to time these Guardian Angels because those are the game-changing items right now. Five minutes is the revive cooldown on those Guardian Angels, and Vulcan need to keep that in mind for the next team fights. If those come back up mid-team fight, that would be devastating for them. Mandatory Cloud. Looks like he's going to pick up his blue and then he will return to the fight. Their lanes are quite pushed for aggression that they want to put on right now. Only the bottom lane 
being pinged out that's past river. That's pretty much where you want to get it cleared to. Approaching 52 minutes into this game at 22 to 17 between the number one team in the league, Cloud9, versus the number two, Vulcan. And they are giving us just that matchup. It's, it's very interesting that we just saw Cloud9 come out with a win, but because that game is so late, a middle inhibitor down for Vulcan does not mean a whole lot. They are not worried about the midline of Siege minions because they have both TF and Shen who could easily clear side lanes of minions and join a team fight around Baron. You can see Sid, he's all the way down in that bot lane. Usually that'd be a ter terrible thing, yeah. but he can come in and fight for this Baron. What Vulcan have to do is keep up their vision on that Baron because they don't <laughs> want to give up another one. The Banshee's Veil taking off a sneaky right there, but it's not going to matter. The rest of the Destiny's really giving them clear vision. And it's up to this point of what's going to happen. Who has it? Lich Bane on that man cloud. Able to take one down. They are going to pressure this in the mid lane. They're not going to let them back as easily as they as they want to just run here. Cloud9 have to make a move, and they just whiffed the arrow bottom. So that was a huge engage that's gone. Mantor Cloud, though, in a very, very tough situation. He's cornered in the base. Oh, he threw the card instead of waiting on it. Going to go ahead and sit on this one, but his team is that Baron buff. He is going to get a little bit of damage onto High, but High can heal up pretty quickly, and here's the engage at Baron. Taking it down. Meteos is in the front line, trying to get that absolute zero off. He can't get to the back. He's trying to Ice Blast on Azuna. So much focus went to Azuna, pushing him out of the base, and it might have been what they needed here at the Baron Den. Psycho State taking so much. Zuna's forced to back. They're saying, you are our last defense. They were able to get the Baron, but at this point in the game, that's not worth four members because Cloud9 can go right up the middle here and end the game. This is what they wanted at this point in the game, Kobe. We talked about a lot of what happened not meaning anything. Any fight at 60 second game timers is a one and done if you make it happen right. It looks like Cloud9 are just gonna go for that win right here. Nexus turret won't stand a chance. The lockdown towards Zuna, he has red buff, but there's no kiting to be done. The fight is in his face, he goes down. Cloud9 comes back from what looked like an impossible win and keep themselves on top at number one. Congratulations, look at them. What? They can't even believe it. That was the most amazing comeback that we have seen in the summer split. Unsure how they stopped it. It was multiple barons to go. He does it. I cannot wait for this interview. You can see Vulcan. When we do get to interview them, we're going to have to figure out what was going through their minds. They had a 10,000 gold lead. How can you not close with a 10,000 gold lead? And that's not to say the Vulcan did anything wrong. We have to say Cloud9 also played exceptional. A 10,000 gold lead team with a Fed Tristana, a Twisted Fate, and a Shen on it. It's not like they had options. They didn't have options available to them. It was just, you can see Smithy at yeah. the end there raising his eyebrows and rubbing his back because he's been in that chair for a long time, trying to figure out what went wrong there. That VOD is going to be looked over from beginning to end by both teams. And we're gonna look at that last Baron fight right now, actually, so we can figure out how it went down. All right, so this was what was going on at Baron as Medios did, you know, he wasn't able to steal the Baron there with the Nunu, but it doesn't matter because they're gonna come out with all the kills here. TF was already down because he had teleported and tried to backdoor. High already answered with that kill, and so they easily clean this one up. And losing four members at this stage in the game is a death sentence. You know, along with being an amazing game, Kobe, I have to say, and for everybody out there that plays League of Legends, these are the games that make you realize you can still win. It can still happen and that you should never, even like Reginald said, I didn't want to tell my team I bought Chalice because it might have brought the mood down. Mm -hmm. You can guarantee that Cloud9's mood was up and up on that game throughout the whole entire thing. You could see them after the first small comeback of one of many Barons that they the were able to get The size of off and the smiles. The size and just... <laughs> Hands in the air, they knew that it wasn't made, but they had a small step on their road back to, to victory. What an incredible game to end that week five, day one for us. We've got to take a short break, but when we return, Cloud9's Medios and High will join us to talk about their amazing comeback win. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to week five of the North American LCS. I'm joined by Meteos and High after what is one of the best, most exciting comebacks I think I have ever witnessed in League of Legends. First of all, congratulations. That was a hard-fought victory. I want to try to take you back all the way back to the beginning, all the way back to the start. Let's talk through picks and bans. I, I overheard you guys talking about Nunu. Uh, what do you think about the decision, Emilios? 
I hate that champion. I was really <laughs> hoping they would ban it because they didn't. I didn't want to play against. So I was like, I guess I'll play Nunu. And that was like the most painful game of my life. I'm not good at him. I don't like him at all. I want to I want to talk about your ultimates with Nunu in particular because we've seen it was comboed with Zyra, which is a, a, another champion that we've seen from you guys that we haven't seen all split long. You guys were staggering your ultimates really well. Have you practiced that? Have was it just something that happened? Mm, not really. That's our first time we played Nunu in like two weeks. Like. We randomly picked Nunu because we didn't want to play versus it. And then we also did the random lane swap with me and Balls because, like, Balls doesn't like 1v2s. And I was like, I, I got this. But then I died, I died, like, four times. So not only did we pick a random champion we haven't played, we also did a random lane swap, and we were just getting dumpstered all game. So talk to me. Why do you do the random picks? Why do you go for the random pick and the random lane swap? Was it just the pressure that it was Vulcan, a team that's beat you guys already? or? Um, I think that was part of it. Um, our bans and picks weren't as prepped as they could have been. We kind of banned ourselves out a little bit with the Ken and Elise, and we forgot they played Eve. So our bans were pretty sloppy that game. And then, yeah, the Nunu was just a complete takeaway. Like, I didn't want to play against it, because that's almost as bad as playing it. And so, yeah, it wasn't as good as it should have been. I got a question for you, Hi. You had a very shaky early game. I mean, you were 0 3, 0 4 at one point. Look, let's be honest, they were camping you. They were giving you a lot of love. They were visiting your tower. But you guys managed to pull it back. So, for you personally, how difficult is it coming back from that deficit to a position where you can actually kill people as Zed? I don't know. I just started laughing. It, the game was funny. Like, we were getting destroyed. We we're down like 13,000 gold. I'm like, all right, if we can like sell the game like 50 minutes, we might win, guys. So then, like, our entire team just started having fun with it. We were losing, we are getting smashed. No one was getting mad at each other because we all knew like this game was like probably over unless like we do something sweet. So it's just like, uh, we are just, uh, we stayed in good morale. We just stayed in a good mood and I was just like farming. And like once I got Botchka and that's just from like, it doesn't matter how far they are, I'm Zed with two items. I can always kill them no matter what. So it's just like, I don't know, man. That, that's really great to hear, talking about the mindset in game, because you guys were behind for a very long time, and it was the engagement that we caught out of Smithy at your blue buff. You managed to pick him up, then you got two more kills, and you guys rolled around to Baron. What, what was the call within the, within the team? Now, you've talked about you there, but when you got that first Baron, was there that like, real glimmer of hope? Like, hey, maybe we can do this now? Um, well, when we caught out Smithy, I, I like, barely saw him on a pink court, and I was like, oh, he's over here. And then. Uh, we baited out his W from some other slow, and then I just like flashed and uh, ice balled him, and so we got that pick off. After we got the first Baron, we were kind of like, is this really happening? Like, I can't believe we just got a Baron when this far behind. And then we weren't fully thinking we'd get back into it, but then after like the second and third Baron, we're like, wow, we can actually win this game. How is it possible that you survived long enough to get two and three Barons, hi? What, what, what was it that either you did right or Vulcan did wrong that allowed you to actually get back in that game? Well, they had a tower dive us to take turrets. Like, we had a decent wave clear, so it's either they had a man up and tower dive us, and which they didn't do that. They tried to split push still. So, like, they just, like, let us stall out the game. They could have towered up and probably destroyed us when they had, like, 13,000 gold. But Evelyn built, like, a Deathfire Grass or something, no Hourglass. So, like, if he ran in, he would probably just die. So, if they changed their builds and actually dived us when they were that far ahead, they probably would have won the game. But they kind of got, like, scared and, like, didn't want to throw, which is, like, like understandable, but like they ended up throwing anyway because like they didn't dive us. They were supposed to dive us, but they didn't, so like it worked out for us. And we have very good counter engage anyway. We have the Zyra ulti and the Nunu ulti, so like if they do dive us, it might turn out very bad for them. So it was a difficult position for them to be in, and it was one that you know you guys managed to, to capitalize on. Uh, it was fantastic. It was extremely exciting to watch, and I know that throughout the entirety of that match, everyone's going, "There's there's no ways this can happen." So you guys are now sitting 11 and two. It's your second victory of the day. Earlier in the day, you guys took out uh, CLG, which was a pretty good game as well. Uh, talk me through some of those victories. Now, you know, that game was a little bit slower paced as well. It wasn't necessarily as uh, hard in your control. Now you've picked up two wins against teams that have beaten you. Uh, how does that make you feel going into the race of the split? Uh, it's a pretty good morale booster. I thought this would be like one of the hardest days we've had in a while, CLG and Vulcan, because uh, we've lost to both of them, and they're both really good teams. So it feels really good to beat them. And yeah, uh, that's about it. So like against Vulcan, we just like, we're, throughout the game, we're just like, bring out our inner CLG, guys. We got this. Bring out our CLG. We're like the next CLG E or something. It's just like, I don't know. We kind of used what they did against us against Vulcan. And then against CLG, they just kind of got snowballed on, which is a respectable way to lose. We almost lost that way, too. So like, I don't know. It's, it's pretty sweet that we won both those games. I'm happy. Yeah, well, you guys are sitting in a, in, in a position where you're looking to go again 3-0, maybe picking up another you know, uh, undefeated week. Tomorrow, you play Velocity Esports. They unfortunately lost both of their matches today. Uh, have you guys got anything special planned for them? Any picks or bans? Maybe not locking a Nunu? 
Um, we have a band and pick sheet. We do that for every team every week. So we already have a sheet uh, back on our notebook. It's our secret notebook that no one can see. So we'll probably go back, look at it, and review it one more time so that we don't do the same mistake against we did against Vulcan because we forgot about the Evelyn and Shen comp. So like, as long as we go look and review it over again and look at what uh, Velocity plays, we probably won't get caught, up, caught out in our ban and pick phase again. So Does that include Echo in the playbook, or is it still with Vile Rose? It did not include Echo in the playbook. We didn't know he was here until oh, like, we got here. So like now he plays Ari and TF, so now we have to count that into... Uh, the playbook. It's, it's right. Well, hopefully you can you guys can update that playbook as as quickly as possible. Congratulations again, going two and zero, and, and thank you guys so much for actually uh, you know stopping by and, and putting on such a fantastic game. I think that's probably the biggest comeback that we've had in the LCS in terms of gold kills and absolutely everything. So fantastically well done.